Hello, my friends. Brian King, the Mindset King here. I have a lot of conversations with entrepreneurs who also have some kind of disability, whether it's traumatic brain injury or chronic fatigue, chronic pain, something like that. And a lot of what I hear from many of them is that they, all the things they can't do because of their disability. You know, they believe what they've been told about, well, this is going to make you more tired. This is going to make it difficult for you to think or do or speak or whatever. I kind of lost track of her over the years, but there was a young lady I connected with in the early days of my Facebook life, going on 10 years now. And she was the most eloquent writer I'd seen in a long time. And I was surprised to find out that she was completely mute. Because I, in my own mind, equated eloquent language with speaking. You know, and then I started hearing her stories about her talking board. They're, they're now in the form of apps where people can speak through an app. But she had one of those clunky, huge box things that took a while for her to find the right button. And people were often impatient with her when she tried to communicate with them. But let her loose on a keyboard and it was magnificent. So she was bound by technology in many ways. She had a lot of physical difficulties that made it difficult for her to leave her house. A nine to five was probably not within her wheelhouse. <clears throat> but she could have done magnificent things if she were hired to maybe copy edit or write blogs for somebody else. She could have been amazing. I, I'll have to look her up. I'm not sure what she's doing these days. But the, the larger point being here is there is there's more to you than your disability. And this is something I have to be reminded of myself because on the days when I get overwhelmed with fatigue or, or pain, sometimes I can get caught up into it. And fortunately, there are people around me who subtly point that out. For instance, the other day, I come downstairs after a nap and my youngest son says, how you doing, Dad? And I said, I'm, I'm pretty tired. He says, you're always tired. I'm thinking to myself, <clears throat> Pardon the, uh, the, uh, the throat here. It's, I'm a little congested. He said, you're, you're always tired, Dad. And I was thinking, wait a minute. Am I always tired? Or I, is that the part of my existence that I spend a lot of time focused on? And it's the latter. I think a lot about, man, I'm so tired. I'm tired again. Man, I'm tired of always being tired. And I'm letting the world know, man, I'm tired. I'm telling my kids, man, I'm tired. So they're seeing me as dad, the tired king. I don't want to just be tired. So what do I do? How do I change that? How do I think bigger than just the tired part of my disability? Well, I started exercising again, bit of an ebb and flow to that habit. I drink my coffee on a regular basis. That helps tremendously. I'm listening to motivational stuff in the morning to raise my mood. It's helping tremendously because I'm not thinking about how to exist within the confines of my disability. I'm thinking, how do I question what I've decided my disability prevents me from doing? Question all of it. Because in many cases, you'll find that you locked yourself into the box, not your disability. And what I was speaking about with that young lady earlier she was confined by technology. And that's probably the bigger message here, is the technology exists to allow you to be successful in whatever you rock at, regardless of your disability. <clears throat> Look at the late Stephen Hawking. Completely incapacitated physically, couldn't speak, and he had some kind of computer program where he could give lectures, he could dictate books, he could argue with other people at his level of the, the physics world, share theories. He wasn't held back in sharing his brilliance because he leveraged technology. Now, fatigue is a huge issue of mine with the MS and the pain and everything. So I could very easily say, well, I can't sit up in front of a computer all day long, which is true, and talk to people and help them because I just don't have the energy. One thing, and I don't think that I've shared this before, because as part of my MS, I have a lesion in my cervical spine, right on the, the nerve there. And it's affected my breathing. 
And for the past year, I've been chronically short of breath. I'm always catching my breath. So after this video, I'm gonna be pretty winded. But here's the thing, knowing that I get exhausted if I was having to talk to people all day long, what do I do? How do I still help people with that reality? Do I say, well, sorry, I can't do it anymore. Short breath. I ask myself, how can I leverage technology so that I can do it anyway? And what I use to get around that is what I'm doing right now, video or audio. Because video these days is so accessible to anyone. You know, you've got an internet connection, you can create video and you can share your wisdom, you can help people and it can be recorded for eternity. It's called evergreen, meaning it's always gonna be there. And it's also always relevant. So you talk about issues that people face on a daily basis and you put it into a video and you archive it somewhere. So the next time somebody asks you a question about that, you don't have to fire up the computer when you're fatigued or short of breath or in pain and say, okay, I have to give what little energy I have left in order to help you. No, you send them to that video. In fact, my membership group here on Facebook, I've got a lot of members in there. And what always surprises me but also makes me excited is there will be people that are in the program that are kind of quiet for a couple weeks. And I wonder if they're actually not getting any value from it only to find out that they've been devouring the videos that I have in there. They've been applying the strategies and they're seeing results in we hadn't even talked yet. Or it had been a couple weeks since we did talk and I didn't have to expend any extra energy and sacrifice my self-care in order to be there for everybody that needs me because I was there before in the past, I recorded it, it's more convenient for them. They can still ask me questions, don't get me wrong. You know, I'm not the great and powerful Oz behind the curtain and nobody can see me. I'm still accessible to them, but it doesn't have to be at the same level of energy, especially on the days when I just don't have it. But my thumbs work. I can sit there and respond to a message and I don't have to risk being shorter of breath or in more pain or more fatigue. So think about that. You know, you have some disability that you think prevents you from doing so many things. But if you find a technological workaround, you may find yourself more abled than you ever imagined, more capable of putting your wisdom and being of service to other people, and you don't always have to be there live in order to make an impact. So think about that. Think about the implications it has for you or somebody you know that's been wanting to break into the entrepreneurial space, but they're too stuck in what they don't know. They're too stuck in the limitations that they've experienced trying to do a traditional brick and mortar nine to five job. When if they started asking the right people how to work around that or how to think bigger and how to obliterate the box entirely, when they start thinking that way, new doors open, new possibilities. So that's my two cents on this. Hopefully it's been helpful. Some very good food for thought, if nothing else. If this has been useful to you, please type something in the comments below. If there's anybody you know that can benefit from this, please share it with them. And until next time, this has been Brian. Thanks for being you.